seems like it's working. Hopefully everyone can hear me. Let's make sure it's working. Let's make sure. my mic okay all right Uh, my name is Adam. I am a bug bounty hunter on Hacker One. This is just a preview of my profile. Almost at a thousand reputation. Um, I do a lot of stuff for the Department of Defense, and these are some other programs I have uh, tested. I have a lot of other private ones, which I actually made most of my profits from. These are some of my badges. So we have cross-site scripting, uh, broken access control, which was an IDOR. Um, and then these are some of my platform badges. Okay. Um, so basically, I'm just gonna we're gonna be testing uh, Pentagon.mil. So let me pull that up. So I'm gonna be testing. Pentagon dot mil and we're just gonna be seeing if we can find any bugs on it and I'm gonna be walking you guys through my my recon process and some of the tools that I use to aid me in finding bugs so if we go here this is my recon roadmap this is basically what I use every time to just get a good understanding of what assets um, a target has or just to have a uh, layout of what I can see so uh, normally I would run for subdomains first so I have two tools here subfinder and sublister they are both on github your sublister okay and Subfinder, which I mainly use. It's by Project Discovery, which is a great um, team. They have some really good tools. Uh, I'll show you other tools that they have that I use. So, Nuclei is a big one, HTTPX, and Nabu. I use all of them, which we'll go through later on in the stream. Alright, so these are my two main tools for finding subdomains if you can't run it on your computer and you rather just find them from the internet projects discovery has a tool named chaos which is really helpful so you can search public programs on hacker one bug crowd integrity and even self-hosted ones so if I look up Department of Defense here it is as you can see you can download all of the subdomains for everything that's in scope so I have done that already and I just took out the text for pentagon.mil alright so as you can see we have a lot of subdomains if I scroll all the way down can't even get to the bottom uh, a lot of subdomains as you can see so the first thing I like to do is once I have all my subdomains, I check for alive subdomains, so we're not testing on dead subdomains. So, if I was really bashing this target, I would load all of these into a um, 
text file and run it through HTTPX, which basically um, allows you to probe HTTP websites to see if they are up or down. And you can have all these different um, tags. So we have like the status code, the title. All right, so instead of doing all of them, I'm going to do a few for now since there's a lot of dead ones in here. So I'm going to take all of these old ones and get rid of all the ones that I think would be to no use of us. So I'll just do the first 25 for now. All right, so I'm going to head into Kali Linux. And I'm going to make a f document named subs.txt. And I'm going to paste in my 25 subdomains. And the next command I'm going to run is HTTPX and then tech L for list subs dot txt and then tech O for output I'm gonna do alive dot txt so when we run this we might not get any alive but we will see what we can find so we run the command and we wait for HTTPX to probe out to the website and as you can see there are none in this folder that are alive so what we're gonna do is go to the next 25 and we're gonna delete all of these because we know they're dead now you could just load the entire file but to save time okay it didn't copy to save time we will just do 25 and it's still not copying cool copy okay it's playing pranks on me it's not wanting to copy our new list so we're gonna try to do this again don't save. We're going to open up our live folder and still not copying the right ones. Okay. This is very interesting. Never had this issue before. Let's just grab some of these and see if we can paste it into a new document. If we can't, then we can run subfinder on our Kali machine and we can just grab some of them. Okay, so since that's not working, I'm going to show you how we use subfinder. So subfinder, and then we do tech D for domain. I'm going to do pentagon.mil. I'm going to do our output as subs.txt. So now it's going to enumerate the subdomain for pentagon.mil. And running a subdomain scan locally is uh, better for active subdomains because Project Discovery is pulling old subdomains or anything that it can find. I mean, they update them, see, like 20 hours ago, so we have to um, be aware of that. So let's run our HTTPX on our new subdomains. As you can see uh, on our scan, it got about 800 or so. Yep, almost 900 subdomains. So we're going to do an HTTPX scan, which will hopefully return some alive subdomains. Starting to get a couple. We can just let this run for a second. While we're waiting for this, I like to show you a tool that I use that is paid, but it is extremely helpful for 
uh, automating your process. So if we go to Pretty Recon, this tool, you can find subdomain details, DNS details, IPs and ports, asset discovery, Wayback Machine, and a bunch of other tools. Um, as you can see, it's 15 a month. I use this almost every day whenever I'm bug hunting. So it lets you find hidden endpoints in JS files. Everything that you could do from your computer, but it has it all in one place and in a really nice dashboard. Okay, so this is enough for now. We have our live folder right here with some of the um, domains. So we can just copy one of these and pop it into our browser and see what we have. Okay, this is uh, looks to be an older uh, web page, but most of the um, websites have the same structure since they're all from the same company. So if we go to links, we can see what we have here. So the first thing I like to do is just go throughout the page and check every single page, check all the endpoints see if there's any interesting features so far nothing that is popping out too much um, just go through it next thing we can look at is the search feature as we can see so we're gonna see okay so if we try to break out. Let's see what happens. Okay. So it's going to continue to break that. So this is one page that we know. Let's head back in and we can manually test all these, which we will, we will get to either later in this stream or in our uh, another stream that we do. All right. So I'm going to head back to the recon roadmap. And the next tool I run once I have my alive subdomains is Aquatone. What Aquatone does is it allows us to have screenshots of the page as well as their responses and it generates it into a nice uh, report in HTML. So we're gonna we're gonna run that on our alive. So if we do Aquatone, okay, let's oh tag H to get our help so we can see we're doing and that's fine I'm pretty sure it is attack either URL actually I forget how to there's this little tool I made here that automates the process of what I'm doing right now so we could take a look at this and find how to run Aquatone because I forget and it's not in here either cool oh I see all right so all we have to do around Aquatone is cat our file so we will cat alive.txt and then we're gonna put Aquatone after that and it'll automatically run as you can see it shows our 200s and our different status codes and then we wait for it to take pictures sometimes ask for that now it'll take screenshots of the pages there we go see screenshot successful all right cool now that that's done we have all of our different files that aquatone puts out but our main one we can focus on is aquatone report.html this will give us an HTML file that basically shows us a report of what it found, which we'll see in a second. So as you can see, we have the screenshot of the one we just visited. As you can see, it's 200, and it has some technologies that it uses. You can also view details. 
Next, we scroll down and we see that there's two uh, 200 ones, but they have no content on the page. And when we scroll down even further, we can see we have four or three forbiddens. This is this is helpful to find uh, web pages that are on big scopes, but you can find some web pages that um, look interesting just from screenshots instead of having to manually check each and every one. So I'm just going to keep that all there. My desktop is a little messy. Okay, we're going to check back into our recon roadmap. So after that is when I would import my subdomains into Pretty Recon and run their automated tools. But since this is for everyone, I'm just going to do how I would manually do it. Okay, so next is our dir search, which is short for directory search. This is like directory brute forcing. So we're going to have to CD into dir search to be able to use this tool since it's Python. So we're going to do python 3 dir search dot pi. And they're going to do tech u for a single URL. And we're going to grab the one that we were testing on earlier. And we're going to paste that right in here. And this takes a while to run. So we might not do the entire test. But as you can see, there's a lot of 403 forbiddens. Which I'm starting to think that we are banned from scanning already. We can check by trying to go to the page. And we might be okay. Seems like we're okay. <coughs> Alright, but this is, I would do this on every subdomain that you get. Some people skip over stuff that you might be able to find just by directory brute forcing. All right. Next is JavaScript enumer enumeration. So this is going to pull all the JavaScript files from a website uh, so we can analyze them later to find secrets or hidden endpoints, links and whatnot. Now, if we were using Burp Suite, you can filter for these types of pages, but I'm going to do it all from this for now. We, we can go to uh, Burp Suite later on in another stream, because Burp Suite can be a whole live stream on itself. So we're going to skip that, and we're going to use Sub.js which is a great tool to get all of the um, JavaScript links. Now, since it's a .mil, sometimes they don't have JavaScript, but from our Aquatone report, we did see that it was running jQuery, so we might get some JavaScript files back, so we can test that now. So these are some tools which we'll go on over later, but for right now, we're just going to use sub.js sub.js we can run that to see oh, sorry run that to see our commands and our first we're gonna take we're gonna keep all these URLs in here and we're just gonna run the entire entire file through this sub.js. So we're going to do a live.txt. And as you can see, our first one, since it is running jQuery, we do see that we pull back some JavaScript files. Now you can output this, but we can just bring these into a js.txt. Alright, now we have our JS files so we can keep them for one second and I'm going to make a new folder named Pentagon 
mil so we can keep everything organized. All right, so we're going to bring all of our Aquatone reporting in there. We're going to take our JS, our subdomains, and our live subdomains, and we're going to drag it all into Pentagon. Okay, now we have all of our Pentagon.mil content in this one folder. Okay, so next we can either manually look through our JavaScript files, which we can take a look at. As you can see, there's just some JavaScript. We can check our jQuery JavaScript file. As you can see, it's just some JavaScript, but if you use a tool like Truffle Hog, Truffle Hog, sorry, not Truffle Hog, actually, yes, Truffle Hog, they have a browser extension that automatically checks web pages for hidden secrets in. Uh, web pages. Um, since I'm on a private or incognito browser, it won't show up here. But if I go down, let's just go to Truffle Security. And here we can see the Chrome extension. So this is a very useful tool to find secrets in web pages just by browsing to them. But there's a tool. Uh, recently, I've seen on Twitter Link Finder, which I would like to test out. Um, oh, not in here. Sorry. And I've exceeded a rate limit. Okay, cool. Link Finder. Okay. And here is the Python tool. So we can try out this. Let's just copy and paste our command. So this is going to help us find links in these JavaScript files so we can test this out. Some common things you'll find in JavaScript files are API keys, certain endpoints that are listed in JavaScript files but not on the actual page. Okay. Last command is to set it up. Just gonna let that install, and we have to run it as sudo. Okay. Now we have our xn link finder .py, so we're going to check out the usage. So find links for a specific target. We can also do it from a list of URLs, which we will do. So all we have to do to run this is python 3 xn link finder dot pi and the tag tech i. And then we'll we have to bring in our JavaScript file to this folder just so the Python th script can run for now. But we'll move it back into there later. Okay, so we're just going to do js.txt. We're going to run this. And there are seven potential unique links, links for the JavaScript file that we went through. So we open up our output docs.txt. As you can see, there are some dot source files which aren't that useful, but we do see one link which I'm pretty sure is just a plugin for. Okay, so this thing might not even exist anymore. But it looks like just a plugin for the JavaScript. Okay, but this is a really good tool to find links in JavaScript files, which we might be able to use more later on once we find a uh, bigger target. 
with more endpoints and URLs and whatnot. All right, so there we had our main page JavaScript enumeration. The same goes for all the other pages. Next, we have a really useful tool, Shodan.io, I'm pretty sure. Most of you guys should be familiar with it, but we can go take a look. So a good uh, dork to use is SSL colon uh, quote your target and then dot com or whatever the ending of it is and put it in quotes. So we're going to do pentagon dot mil. We can also put at a 200 at the end here, so it only shows uh, 200 status codes. What's up, Mati? Okay. So we're going to run this, and we have to log in. So I'm going to do that on my secondary screen here. One second. I'm going to try to log in with an account that I don't really care about. Okay, cool. So we're going to try that again. So SSL colon in quotes pentagon dot mil back in quotes and 200 for the status code so we only get live uh, results. All right, so we're going to search. Now, if a domain is big enough, we will get some results here. So as you can see, we have a couple of IPs, which is really good to see. So we can either head straight to the IP, which we can see leads us to a uh, Cisco logon, which is having an internal server error. So what I like to do is I have the paid um, subscription on a different account. Um, one second. Okay, so let's head back to Shodan, and as we can see, we have 13 results. So let's just open up our Pentagon, and we can create our document name Shodan.txt. Now with the paid version, you can use your API key to uh, export all of the IPs. Um, right from the command line, which we can actually do here. Hopefully it doesn't show my API key. That would not be nice. But I do have a command for this in the recon roadmap. Um, here it is. So Shodan search and then the target. It'll run it through HTTPX and make a new file for ips.txt. So we're going to take this and we're going to paste it into here and we're going to change this to pentagon.mil and change the file name to shodan.txt. And we should get a couple less results since some of the web pages might be dead but as you can see we have let's count um, we have Shodan so we have 12 yeah so one less than the web browser which could be from either a 403 or something along the lines of that okay now that we have our Shodan uh, IPs from pentagon.mil 
we can either run a, another Aquatone scan or we can visit the links manually. I'm going to run another Aquatone scan just so we can quickly run through our uh, IPs here. So I'm just going to take out this txt file since we already have uh, one report here. So we're going to open up another terminal. We're going to cat our shodan.txt and we're going to pass it through Aquatone. All right, and as you can see, we have a lot of 200s. Now with Shodan, you can find a ton of juicy uh, websites that aren't meant to be found right away. This is where I found most of my um, bounties that I've gotten is through Shodan, which is worth the $50 investment for a one-time purchase. So now we're going to look through our uh, Aquatone report. And we're going to see if we have any interesting websites here. So we have two invalid URLs, which is fine. As we scroll down, we see internal server errors. If you can see that, that means it's just a Cisco login page. And that is what all of these might be, which is pretty funny. So yes, all of these are OK. My Kali is lagging. <laughs> All of these are just Cisco uh, internal errors. And the way I know it's Cisco is this uh, URL is commonly found in Cisco. So if we look at logon.html, we go, we can use a little bit of Google dorking here. Um, you can do in URL, and I forget if I have to have quotes, but we can find out. And let's try to close that closer. All right, and as you can see, uh, it's mostly used for Cisco VPNs which is sometimes you can find some oh god sometimes you can find some interesting uh, portals and whatnot and sometimes you can find explicit results on Google which is very fun so as you can see this is just a different um, URL that we found just by Google dorking uh, to find different Cisco VPN logins. Okay, so now that we have our showdown, we're going to drag this back into there and we can move all of this over here for now just so we know where everything is. Okay. Now that we have our showdown, we know that they are just Cisco VPNs. But you never know what can be inside or out of, out of these. So what we can do is we can try to run a directory search on one of these. So we're going to run our Python 3 dir search again, just on one of these for now. All right. And we're going to let this run. So as you can see, we did find some uh, endpoints that are coming back as 200, which is perfect. Most of these will be our error message. Uh, 302 is just a redirect to this endpoint. We're going to stop this and we're just going to scroll back up to where we see some of our 200s. Now, 
the good thing about Dir Search is it shows the size of the page that came back. So as you can see, we have a 47-bit response for different endpoints, which could mean that it's just returning an error um, that it's not showing or it's not redirecting to here. But as you can see, we have a 200 with zero bytes for this different uh, endpoint, and we can run this on each and every one to find different endpoints. But let's just make sure, and we can go to this page, and we can just open up one of these since it's the same. And if my theory is correct, we should just get another internal server error. Yep, because that's just the same size as logon.html, which we got before. Okay, cool. Basically, right now, I'm just showing a simple recon to find more surface area or attack surface. Um, later on in the next couple of streams, we can dig deeper into other um, public programs that may have more uh, features or whatnot. Um, we can check back to our recon roadmap. Some other stuff that we can run is um, vulnerability enumeration. So Nuclei is the best tool that I've found so far. It's pretty, uh, it sends out a lot of traffic, so just be weary of that. Um, Burp Suite is also good for finding some small vulnerabilities. I haven't found a valid uh, vulnerability through Burp Suite's scanner uh, for the Pro version. So if you are looking to buy Burp Suite Pro just for the vulnerability scanner, you may want to hold off on that because it has not come in handy for that reason specifically um, so far in my research. Um, next thing we can test is S3 buckets. Now I know um, dot .mil, all of the domains actually use uh, S3 buckets all over the place. So we can test for that now with a tool called Slurp. So basically, uh, I'm not sure exactly what S3 buckets are used for. I just know that they host um, content, and it's like a, a container for objects. So you can store just like a uh, public cloud storage resource is the official description. So what we're going to do is, to run it, we do slurp, and then domain tech p, and then permutations, and t for our target, which will be pentagon.mil. Now this is going to take a little bit, so we can um, go grab a drink, go grab some popcorn, some type of food to keep you awake during my amazing recon roadmap. I'm just going to check, see what else we have here. Link hijacking. All right, so we have two more things on our roadmap. I'm going to, I'm going to um, post uh, my recon roadmap in the discord for anyone to use if they would like to follow this just to get some basic recon. As you can see, we are getting back some uh, Pentagon buckets. So as we can see, uh, they're forbidden. So that means usually we won't be able to do anything with them. But uh, if we see allowed, we can start testing the S3 buckets from there. I'm going to post um, I'm going to post 
this recon roadmap in the resources channel and the discord which if you haven't joined it is in the description of this live video so let me paste that right here That is now in the resources. Cool. All right, so this is just going to keep scanning for S3 buckets that are linked to pentagon.mil. You can find some pretty interesting things through these S3 buckets, which I'm sure most of um, these buckets have been checked before by other bug bounty uh, people or even uh, the Pentagon's own security team. So Matsi just uh, recommended a, another website which I have heard of before CRT.sh which is, stands for cert, search I'm pretty sure. So if we go to that uh, that would be. I guess I could just paste that in, see if that works. Go to site. Yeah. Pentagon.mil. And it will show us all of the certificates for <coughs> Pentagon, which includes some subdomains. Now, I can pull up, if I can find it, a command to grab them. One second. There was a command to just pull the subdomains from them. But you can find some pretty interesting uh, subdomains and information from these websites. So as you can see, we have a bunch of uh, Pentagon subdomains. And we can also find some Pentagon emails, which is good if you're doing more than just a bug bounty, say if you're trying to, you're hired to pen test an entire website or an entire company. You can grab emails from here. So as you can see, we have some emails from pentagon.mil. Visitors.pentagon, which we can visit. <laughs> and let's see if this is an actual web page. So it's 4.3 forbidden. Okay, we can just start checking these. Now there is a one-liner somewhere out there, which I can find later on that just grabs all of the subdomains from here but we can just check these for now we're waiting for our s3 to s3 buckets to finish although it'll probably take a while for them to finish so we may just move on to the next thing okay um Okay, so as you can see, there's a ton of different um, S3 buckets, and they're all over the internet. So you can always test for those on each website you try for bug bounties. Next, we're going to try broken link hijacking, which has gotten me a decent amount of money just by clicking on one icon on a website and if the social media account is there, it's okay. But if there is no account there, uh, that is a vulnerability because people can take over the account and spoof themselves as uh, the company that it is linked to. So if we go to the actual Pentagon page, I can give an example. So pentagon.mil. And that's not even a website, so Pentagon. 
and it'll just take us to the defense.gov, but this is in scope um, for uh, Department of Defense's bunk or, uh, vulnerability disclosure program. So as you can see, we have some social media icons at the top. They're also normally at uh, bottom of pages. So say for instance, if there was a Twitter account and I go to visit the Twitter and there is no account for this Twitter page, that is a valid vulnerability because a normal user could be visiting this page and going to Twitter thinking it's owned by the Department of Defense, but I'm just spoofing uh, my ownership and I can just take over this account. So I found a tool that automates this process. The tool is called Social Hunter, which is right here. And we can just take a look. I'm not going to run it because we know that uh, the main page has all of the social medias linked. But if we go to Social Hunter, we can see that there's only two um, arguments, so tac f, and that'll have URLs that you put in here, and it'll scan through the websites that you uh, put in the file, and it'll go through each one, and it'll test for these accounts. If we look it up, social hunter GitHub. Now we might get some junk but this is what we want so as you can see it tests for broken links as Twitter Facebook Instagram and TikTok without any API key so you won't even have to input anything here's a quick video demonstrating it this is what it would look like so you put in the URLs and as you can see it shows all of the different URLs that can be taken over. All right. Let's head back to the recon roadmap. And our last thing which we can try out now would be Nuclei, which this is takes the longest. Um, so let's drag all that over there. And let's first try it on our alive subdomains. So Nuclei is pretty easy to operate, but first I'm going to update it because I think it is out of date. So we can tac tac update and I'm going to run it as sudo. Now it's just going to update Nuclei because I know I have an old version. <laughs> cool. Now if we run Nuclei just to check, we can see that our Nuclei templates are out of date, which is shows us, we're gonna, we can visit the webpage while we're waiting. Um, it basically has a list of uh, vulnerabilities that it goes through. So if we scroll down to templates, as you can see, there's a ton of different vulnerabilities that it can scan for, such as CVEs, exposures. So if we click on exposures, we go to logs. And as you can see, there's Django debug exposures. And it even links to some certain references in the .yamls. So we go to this one, you can see there's some spicy data that we can find with this. So now that everything's updated, we can run it against our URLs. Tech L for list and alive.txt. So if we were to run this by itself, it would pop back a lot of informative vulnerabilities which if you're doing a bigger scope, 
you wouldn't really have to worry about the informative bugs. You'd only care about low, medium, high, and critical. So they came up with some arguments for that, uh, which is in my uh, tool for automation, and it is right here. So we can take this, and it'll only take out, it'll only do low, medium, high, and criticals, also unknowns, which is it detects API keys and whatnot, and then an e tag for intrusive. So we can run that. It's going to run it against all of our alive domains, and we can see it's going to have 655 HTTP requests that it's going to send out. So as you can see, our load is getting significantly higher when we run this tool. So we're going to let this run. Um, a thing to keep in mind when you're running this or running any tool is to be aware that sometimes you will get blocked by a web application firewall or something along the lines of that because of the amount of traffic that you're sending to the website. And also, all of this that I'm showing you, use this for good faith. Do not just go around running these scanners on websites that aren't yours or you have permission to scan and test. Okay, so this is, this is, uh, it normally takes this long because it's running through every single template that was listed. So we, as we can see, we have 2,218 templates that it's running through and sending to each and every one of those URLs. So we might not get anything back but all we can do for now is wait. And another tool by Project Discovery that I haven't shown yet is Nabu. So we can go visit that page here. Basically what Nabu does is it it's a port scanner, but it does not use your computer to port scan it. Uh, if my if my Google will work, so it uses a port scan, and it doesn't even use your computer to port scan, or you can set it up that way. So as you can see. They ran a test scan on Hacker One, and it shows back all of the ports that are open on that website. So it's a good, fast way to port scan instead of running Nmap on every single URL or uh, file. All right, so I'm gonna cancel this um, nuclei scan on our URLs because I don't think it's gonna find anything. A lot of people have probably already tested that those couple URLs, but what people do not test a lot is our Shodan IPs. So we're gonna run the same command as before just with Shodan hopefully yep. All right. and we're gonna run that and let's see if we get anything back as I said before uh, Shodan is my main source of finding bugs because they are showing um, IP addresses that are they're not on the domain they're specifically IP addresses which sometimes leads to juicy uh, URLs 
so we can take a look at another um, domain from the dot mil which is navy dot mil and we see if we get any more results so 464 results now this is interesting because as you can see we have a welcome to sun grazer you can also sort by products organizations and whatnot also ports so what we're gonna open up here is this one it is a part of our scope so we can go here and apparently we cannot go there because it's IPv6 and it doesn't let us travel there cool well we can try this one so I just make sure that you're always going to the right scope and as you can see we load in here and we have a welcome screen and then the website dies so you can go through all of these some of them as you can see are like different countries military as this one is the Philippines but this one we have one from the Navy so we can test this one Let's just check up on our nuclei scan nothing yet as you can see this is a uh, pulse secure which I think is a VPN or something along the lines of that can check pulse secure so yes uh, access VPN so as you can see once we reload this page it gives us a download to download the launcher which we could then VPN into although we would need credentials but that is just one step closer to finding something interesting So Shodan is a great tool to use if you are not using it. I highly recommend you either purchase the $50 subscription or try to use the uh, free version for now. As you can see, our usage is around 50% because we're scanning all of the uh, IPs and URLs that we gave it earlier. Um, we could let that run. I'm not sure if we would get anything in a timely manner. Okay. So let's take a look at um, some more subdomains since we only scanned a couple. Let's open up our Pentagon and hit our subs. Let's just grab so we can just run our uh, HTTPX command again. So we're gonna HTTPX tech L subs tech O for output again alive two dot txt. Now we're gonna let this run a little bit longer. I'm going to grab a drink I'll be right back
going back. Just grabbing. <laughs> Need a drink. Okay. So our Pentagon.mil isn't grabbing anything. Uh, it's probably just running through the entire list. So we can keep taking a look at uh, CRT.sh. We can see if we can find any other interesting subdomains on here while we're waiting. So you can see we can filter by log time. So we can go all the way back to 2013 or 2000 around then, yeah. And we can see that they have some old subdomains. We can check all of these. Now some good ones to look out for whenever you're searching for subdomains are admin. So we can see we have one. We can test this. That one's dead. Um, another good one to test for is dev. So this is interesting. If any of these are up. Um, sometimes I like to just try private, secure, yeah, none of them seem to be up. Okay, so out of all of those 800 and some subdomains we pulled from SubFinder, there's only three that were alive. Um, we can check... Uh, DNS recon uh, pentagon dot mil um, time and error right so we're gonna have to try and do a subdomain for DNS recon let's try that so we're gonna try the one that we know works Okay, DNS recon and tack D for domain. And it cannot resolve domain. Cool. That's just wonderful. Let me make sure I'm not, oops, getting blocked. This is a this is pretty neat. I didn't even think of this. So this seems to be what it's being hosted on. So as you can see, prod, which uh, most likely stands for uh, production app. Yeah, Matsi had another good idea is to check for remote. Sometimes it leads to VPN or something along the lines of that. Uh, another good subdomain um, tool online is DNS Dumpster. It has a really nice a really nice graph that it shows. So if I type in Pentagon dot mil here, let me give it a second. As you can see, we get some DNS servers back, and we also get some host records. So as you can see, we have some, uh, let me find, so as you can see, yeah, here it is. So you can view the graph and this gives you a great mind map of everything that's in scope. Uh, let me just try to separate everything as the best. Okay, so some of these may not be alive but as you can see, if we search through, let's go back to the um, thing here. As you can see, we have some, we could search for admin again, nothing, dev, nothing, remote, secret. Okay, nothing for them, but we can just check. And 
are some interesting ones like pent. Which if we go to, is it up? check HTTP headers at this website and it seems as if none of these are up. Oh, error connecting to target. It's also useful for grabbing IP addresses of the websites as well. So if we just paste that into here, I can see that's not up. Okay. Now, uh, going back to our S3 uh, bucket enumeration and whatnot, after slurp, which is to find them, I have a tool right here called bucket flaws. And you input your S3 buckets into there, and you have to configure the AWS command line interface before you run this target because it tests authenticated and unauthenticated um, tests for if you can pull data if you can upload data and whatnot um, let's go to that website uh, bucket flaws as you can see these are the checks that it looks for so unauthenticated bucket as access it tries to upload a file and then it tries authenticated uh, bucket access. Access, so it, it runs all these different commands in one place and automates it all. It's a pretty useful tool. I found a couple bugs this way. As you can see, it lets you run some tools or run some checks. Um. We can check back on here. So it looks like we ran through almost everything on our base recon. So let's just let's just circle back here and review everything. So our first step is to gather subdomains, which we did with subfinder and you can also use sublister or some web interfaces such as crt.sh dns dumpster and project discovery um, as a matter of fact if i can grab this here let me go to uh, we could sort by size so we can see that Air Force military has the most amount of subdomains which we can we can test on um, next episode or next stream we are just doing pentagon.mil as our first target all of these are public bug bounty programs uh, we can go to that page here so DOD hacker one and as you can see here's their vulnerability disclosure program <clears throat> and they are actually have a campaign right now for high and critical so they pay out for them um, I think I am 51st on the leaderboard for them yep 51st this is me for all of the people tuning in now, um, this is my account. I'll go to my Twitter as well. This is my Twitter. If any of you guys want to shoot me over a message, I'm on here. I'm on Discord. Uh, we can go through some of my um, things here. So this is my YouTube channel. Everyone <laughs> loves spreadsheets. A really loud ad. Um, I just started posting some 
previews of some tools that I mentioned in this video. Uh, just some short videos showing the tool and what it does. Um, some of the other stuff on my um, Twitter. I just post some one-liners uh, that I do and some other tools that I put up here. Yeah. Matsi, uh, to talk about some of your bounties you've already done. Yeah. Um, I can only talk about some of it because uh, it wasn't fully, some of them are not fully disclosed. But if we take a look back to Hacker 1. Um, one second. Gotta grab my Hacker 1 profile again. Okay. We could talk about some of the ones for Department of Defense and whatnot. Um, yeah, so Department of Defense, I found a lot of information disclosure, some cross-site scripting, as well as um, unauthenticated access to some dashboards, like admin dashboards and whatnot, um, which are still open, so I can't fully disclose uh, what was about that. Um, Scopely, which is a mobile gaming company, I found a iDoor somewhere on one of their assets, which basically allowed me to opt out anyone on their emailing services, which was pretty cool. They fixed that, they resolved that, so that one is, I'm able to disclose that. Um, Line is a tele, uh, let's see. I honestly forget. Um, I think they do a lot of stuff. But I found CrossFit scripting in one of their platforms, which I can't say, but we can actually run through some of the basic vulnerabilities that I found. So CrossFit scripting, IDOR, and we can do information, information. Actually, we can do broken, broken control so these are like in my findings recently these are the top three um, vulnerabilities I have found as well as information disclosure but that goes case by case uh, cross-site scripting I'm sure you guys have heard of it there's a couple types of cross-site scripting there's reflected stored DOM based uh, reflected is actually we can test this which I like doing editor so if we go to any free online HTML editor we should be able to pop reflected cross site scripting because it's rendering it um, if we use this uh, actually let's try a different one just trying to showcase uh, cross site scripting to show what it does so let me pull up a cross-site scripting payload so basically when testing for cross-site scripting you can grab any of these or try to break it um, specifically how the web page is rendering the HTML and JavaScript so you can try any of these or try case by case but as you can see this is a HTML page and if it had a search search function somewhere and I input this script somewhere else in between something let me try to grab it here okay so this one doesn't work it all depends on how the web page is loading the content and whatnot so as you can see let's try Let's put that there, and it won't pop. Okay. Let's try it somewhere else. Let's try a normal. Try an 
thing. All right, nothing's popping, but basically, once you inject your cross-site scripting payloads, it'll pop up on it'll pop up on anyone's browser if they visit that URL or if they visit a forum page that you put in your payload on, it'll show it there. Um, yeah, these are some good tools to automate the process, although I think um, manually hunting for cross-site scripting is better in it. I have found a couple stored cross-site scripting, which is higher severity depending on the case on um, a private program, which I found three of them, so I'm waiting for my payouts for them. Um, the next uh, common vulnerability I find is IDORS, which is an uh, insecure direct object reference. Um, a good thing to do if you're new starting out um, in bug bounties is to go to HackerOne's uh, Hacktivity. I'm, I forget how you, I think it's just HackerOne.com slash Hacktivity. Yep. Um, and as you can see, here's our reflected cross-site scripting, so we can take a look at this. And it shows some reports of um, what what they found. So they found a cross-site scripting bug on one of New Relic's subdomains. And as you can see, if there's this URL, say if a victim was to open this before it was patched, they would open it and JavaScript would execute code on their browser. Um, this is a great resource for beginners and even people in the security community to read through these and you can learn a lot just by reading some of these reports. Um, but if we search for, you can even search for specific bugs, so if we search for IDOR, we can get our results for um, some reports based on IDOR. So if we go, I'm trying to find like a simple one. Uh, they might not have this fully open. Yeah. There's different types of disclosure we can check through. Um, let's see if there's one on Starbucks, which is not open okay we'll find one one day um, go there and here and see one of these has to be open or not they might be closed since I'm not logged in but you get the idea if you go to them and check their uh, you can learn a lot from them. So IDOR is basically if I have an ID that equals one two three and that's or one two four and that's my account name or that's my account identifier and I change it to one two three, I could have access to someone else's settings or pages or whatnot. So you're basically changing values, swapping out values for to try to load um, content that isn't yours. Uh, so an IDOR is a bug under broken access control, which is basically a broader uh, vulnerability. So it could be anything like an admin and a user. If a user has admin privileges, that would be broken access control. So those are the top three um, bugs that I've found so far. Uh, I've only been doing it, I forget the exact number, we can take a look at my profile here. Um, we can take a look at when my first bug was submitted. I might try to 
take us down too far. As you can see, there's one online, a couple on some interesting websites. Yeah, I mean, I've been doing it for a good amount now. Um, yeah, does anyone have any questions about Hacker One, bug bounties in general, web app security, or any tools you would like me to check out, or any um, dot mil subdomains, or anything along the lines of that? You got know we got a couple people watching. We got about five people watching. Does anyone else do bug bounties? I'll be happy to collaborate. I've done a couple of collaborations. Not. Yeah, how long do I normally spend on a bounty? So, it depends on the program. I mean, basically, I'd spend about 30 to 40 minutes just doing recon. Um, I made this little uh, shell script just to automate my recon, which I ran through here. Um, we could actually run that just to show you um, what it does, basically. So enter the root domain. So if I was to do pentagon.mil, it makes the folder and it starts running through everything I showed you um, so that cut down my recon time to about I'd say like 15 minutes if I was to do it on everything and let the f f scan fully run and then once I have my recon and all of my endpoints and whatnot I will start manually testing which can take up to a couple hours or even a couple days um, I've done a collaboration with one of my good friends and we spent about five hours um, just constantly testing a program and we found about like one bug so that's the thing about um, bug bounties is you're not always gonna find something and people get burnt out really easily because they think they're just gonna automatically find something if they run three tools they think they're gonna you know find like the biggest vulnerability which isn't the case you have to take your time and really manually search for things I mean automation is good to a certain point but once I mean almost every bug bounty person is running automated tools so uh, there's not much difference in what you can run against the target uh, manual is better, but manual takes longer, it takes more effort and more thinking, so it could go from anywhere to a couple hours or even to a couple days of fully testing a program, and of course you could always come back and try new things. It's not like once you test a program, you can never come back and test it again. But yeah, that's about the average time I spend on a program. a good question if you don't have any other questions let me see if I can find some other good um, oh, I guess I can list a couple good uh, resources if you guys want to get more uh, into bug bounties um, let me clear out this There's a couple good YouTubers out there. Jason Haddix, he's his bug bounty or bug hunters methodology is really good. It helped me build my tool and build my recon roadmap. Um, this is his Twitter, and he also has a YouTube which I watch. Okay. 
Um, that's one guy. Another good one is Godfather Orba. He has some really good videos on YouTube explaining the recon process and some of his um, collaborations and what he does. It's he's a really really good uh, resource. Uh, Mati asked, "What is what is next with the info you have gathered?" Yeah, so um, this Pentagon.mil doesn't really have a lot of resources, so there's we can't really go that deeper into it other than manual uh, testing and um, just searching for like hidden things. Um, if it was a if it was more of a like uh, software for users, we could keep testing like broken access control, and whatnot. But since it's we only technically have this one page here. Um, one second. Chrome. Since we only have this one web page that we can really do anything on, I'd say my next, my next test would be to just try to break the search bar, see if we can find cross-site scripting anywhere in here. As you can see, we get a 4-3 forbidden because we are entering characters that the website doesn't like so we can try to you know bypass that by adding different um, symbols and whatnot um, but if it was a bigger scope uh, which we might be able to test on a different uh, military website we could go further into the actual functionalities and more like broken logic rather than just grabbing JavaScript files and looking through all that um, yeah, so that's basically like the overhead recon and then you can, um, like dig deeper into, uh, some more manual bugs like cross-site scripting, broken access control, and like broken, um, business logic or whatever. But I think this is a pretty good base to start out with. Um, to dive in, we can even s start on another one. Uh, let me just remove all this. Uh, like if we do, we can try out, we can test out my tool here. I'll be posting the tool soon on my GitHub. I haven't completely finished it, so... I'm just still testing with it, but as you can see, my tool creates the folder, and I'll start running all the tools. So our next stream will be focused on army.mil. As you can see, there's 8,399 subdomains, and we're going to have a lot of... Uh, more subdomains for army.mil so we can we can test that on the next stream I'm not gonna get too far into that so we can just delete these for now and we'll keep that for next stream but I think that's good for our first stream we'll have a couple more and um yeah I'll link my all my socials and everything in the chat right now before I go. So this is my so that's my Twitter. Link my so the next stream should be next Wednesday. I accidentally thought it was Wednesday today, so I started streaming today, but Next time it will be Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, that's my Twitter, my Discord, and I can drop my YouTube if anyone wants to reach out to me. 
whatever. There's all of my socials. Um, I'm in the Discord and I'm always active. So if anyone needs to reach out to me for anything, I'll be there. And yeah, that's my type of streaming. And we'll hit army.mil on our next stream. Alright, guys. Alright, cool. Alright.